wish for it, or you can work for it. You gotta work for greatness. If you ain't working, you should be working. What's up, y'all? Happy Wednesday. I'm waiting on a couple more people to join us. But while we're waiting, let me know where you all are tuned in from. Or you can work. Y'all know I'm broadcasting live from the ATL. You should be working. Where are you tuned in from? Any other people watching from Hot Atlanta? Compton in the building. I was just in LA. Orlando. I was just in Orlando. You ain't working. You should be working. Arizona. I went to Arizona last year for the first time. I definitely got to go back though. I didn't get to do much. Los Angeles. Yay! We will be speaking later today. That's exciting. Can't wait to talk to you. Shy Town in the building. You know I'm from Joliet, right? Midwest Connect, yes ma'am. Alright, I'm gonna wait for one more person to join. You can wish for it, or you can work for it. You gotta work for greatness. If you, if you ain't, ain't working, working, you should be working. Alright, alright. Happy Work Wednesday, and welcome to the Get Actually. The very first time that I have gone live um, from this page, so I'm super excited. We are building up this page so that I can kind of separate my brand. So I am Coriel. If you're unfamiliar, let me start by just introducing myself, and then we'll get into today's topic. So I'm Coriel. Um, it's much easier to pronounce than it looks. It's like L'Oreal, but with a K. I am an author. I'm a serial entrepreneur. You name it, I've done it. If it's legal, I have sold it. And I managed to turn my $32,000 teaching salary into a six-figure brand. Into multiple six-figure brands, actually. Multiple six-figure brands, actually. I've been an entrepreneur since I was 17. I'm not going to say how long ago that was, but it, it was a while ago. Since I was 17, and I've literally never depended on one stream of income. I truly, truly believe that although entrepreneurship is not for everyone, multiple streams of income is. Multiple streams of income used to be a thing like that we would hear about wealthy people have, you know, seven streams of income. It's no longer something just for wealthy people. Like multiple streams of income is no longer a luxury. These days it's a necessity. Unfortunately, I have literally witnessed people in my life who were depending on these paychecks, depending on these jobs, thinking that these jobs are going to be loyal to them until the day that they weren't. And on that day, they had to scramble. They had to shuffle. They had to figure out, how am I going to stop myself from going broke? How am I going to keep from hitting rock bottom? And it was really, really difficult um, because they were dependent on that one paycheck. They were literally, their livelihood was dependent upon that one stream of income. And so part of my purpose, since breaking out of that paycheck prison, part of my purpose is to help other people break free as well. So I'm not saying you got to quit your job. I'm not saying you have to start a business and be your own boss. I'm simply saying that all of us, need multiple streams of income because we cannot rely on just one. The day you become bad for business, the day that that company can't afford to pay you anymore, the day that company decides to replace you with somebody whose salary is a little bit less than yours, you're going to be done, right? And so I really want to help as many women as possible understand that you cannot depend on that one stream of income. And so I talk to a lot of people um, now that I've started back coaching, I t well, my one-on-one -on -one coaching. I talk to a lot of people who have these great ideas, but they're scared, right? They are literally letting their fear take over, and they're sitting on literally million-dollar ideas. And so my um, leading thought for today's topic is that you only get credit for what you execute. Okay, you only get credit for what you execute. All of us are sitting on million dollar ideas. All of us have good ideas, right? You don't just, you don't get credit for having a good idea. You only get credit for manifesting that idea. All right, you only get credit. It doesn't matter unless you manifest it. So as long as you keep those ideas in your notebook, they're worthless. As long as you keep talking about those ideas, talking about it, but not being about it, it's worthless. As long as you keep dreaming about it, praying for it, but not preparing for it, 
right? Putting it on your vision board, but not actually bringing that vision to life, you're going to be frustrated. You're going to be wasting your time and you're going to look up one day and wonder why everybody is moving along in life and you are still stuck. And so the number one or the first part, not the number one, but the first part in turning your idea into income is really understanding that if your mindset stays the same, so will your money. Let me add in today's topic. There it goes. If your mindset stays the same, so will your money. And so today I want to share with you, again, this is day one of a four-part series. So Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday at 12 noon Eastern Standard Time, I will be here live at the Get Money Gang sharing um, sharing different ways for you to turn your idea into income, all right? So the first way for you to be able to turn your idea into income is by changing your mindset, all right? If your mindset stays the same, so will your money. And so in order for me to really start not just making money, but making different types of money, I had to start changing my mindset. And so today I want to share with you three mindset shifts that I had to make in order to make more money. And I think that they're going to be helpful um, if you start changing your mind so that you'll, you can make more money as well. All right. Let me get like a little money bag. If y'all are ready, because y'all are quiet. I know this page is new, but y'all still going to have to give me some. Y'all still going to have to engage and interact. So let me get a money bag, a dollar sign, something if you want to learn these three mindset shifts so that you can make more money. There we go. All right. Y'all are quiet. Y'all know I just, I feel like I'm sitting here talking to myself. If y'all aren't um, talking back. And we only got 12 people tuning in. So I need something. All right. Y'all got to give me something. Um, I'm going to try to save this live. Sometimes it gives me an option to save and sometimes it doesn't. But I'm going to do my best to save um, this one. All right. So three mindset shifts in order to make more shmoney. April is ready. All right. Number one, the first mindset shift that I had to make is this one. And this is one that I know that y'all have, y'all have made this mistake too. So number one, the only way to make more money is by getting another degree. That's an old mindset that I used to have. That's an old belief system that I used to have. And I talk to a lot of people, some of my mentors, some of my clients, um, a lot of times, the very first thing that they want to talk about or that they want to run by me is this idea to go back to school. And I'm an educator, right? I am a teacher at my core, so I'm not hating on the education system. I'm not taking anything away from people with degrees. I got two degrees myself, but guess what? My second degree, well, actually, let me start with my first degree. My undergraduate degree from Tennessee State University cost me zero dollars, and I mean not, not a dime. I had a full scholarship to TSU. I didn't have to take out money for uh, books. I didn't have to take out money for anything. I didn't have a single dime in student loan debt when I graduated from Tennessee State University with my bachelor's degree. But guess what? About two years into my teaching uh, career, when I realized, okay, this $3,200 um, or $2,800 um, monthly check that I was getting, it wasn't cutting it. Like, I don't know if you've ever worked a job where you got paid one time per month, but that's a different type of stress. Like, that's a whole nother level to budgeting when you have to make one paycheck stretch for 30 days. Now, if it's a $10,000 paycheck, then we can make that thing stretch for 30 days. But when we're talking about $2,800 that you have to make last for 30 days, that's another thing. That's a whole nother type of struggle and stress, okay? So about two years in, I realized, okay, this teaching salary, this bachelor's degree, it's not making me enough money. So what did I do? I did what most people do. Unfortunately, the millennials, our generation, we were led to believe that in order to make money, you got to have degrees. In order to really get to the check, you got to have all these titles. You got to have, you know, this ED, this um, OD, this all of these these um, abbreviations after your, after your last name. Right. That's what we were led to believe that the only way to get ahead is to continue our education, continue to get these degrees. Right. So after two years of teaching, I decided, OK. I'm not making enough money. My only choice is to go back and get my master's degree. 
right? Go back and get my master's degree. After going back to get my master's degree, my paycheck, well, let me back up. That master's degree got me $89,000 in student loan debt. So somebody who literally did not have a single dime in student loan debt now has $89,000 in student loan debt. Because you know, unless you have like grants, unless you have like, um, what's it called? When you're like working to pay towards your, um, towards, towards your, your degree, when it comes to grad school, everything is loans. Right. So I literally had to take out loans to cover my entire master's degree. So that degree that cost me eighty nine thousand dollars only work study. Yeah, that's what I was trying to think of. It cost me eighty nine thousand dollars. But guess what? I got a three thousand dollar raise. Now, let me do some math real quick, just so y'all know how petty the Board of Education is. Um, three thousand dollars divided by twelve. $250 more per month. $250. What can you do with $250? What can you do? I mean, there's literally not a whole lot of things that you can do with $250. And yet, I just paid $89,000. $89,000 to get a $250 raise. Okay? And so, the first mindset shift that I really had to change in order to start making money is that it's not all about just getting degrees. Degrees don't equal dollars, unfortunately. I hate to be the bearer of bad news. If you have not already realized this harsh reality yourself, then let me just say it again. Degrees do not equal dollars. Now, it does depend on your industry. It does depend on your career field. Absolutely. Your degree might make you some money. My man is a, is a doctor. He has a pharmacy degree. His degree is making him some money. His degree was worth his student loans. A teaching degree is not worth the student loans. And I can only speak for teachers because that's what my experience is in. So number one, the first mindset shift that I had to make in order to make more money is that the only way to increase your income is not through getting another degree. Okay, so if you are somebody who's been thinking about going back to school, you've been waiting on a sign, you've been waiting on God to, to, to whisper something in your ear, let me whisper on his behalf. Degrees do not equal dollars. And the other thing is you may spend all of this time and energy and money investing in these degrees and then six months from now you don't even want to do it no more. A year from now you're not even interested in this field anymore. Right? And so I truly believe if you already have your bachelor's degree try some things out. Right? Experiment. See what you like. See what you don't. But don't run back to school for another degree unless you are guaranteed to make at least what that degree is going to cost you. Because if you're only getting a $3,000 raise with an $89,000 degree, it's not worth it. It just doesn't make sense. All right. So instead of going back to get that MBA, instead of going back to get that MBA, um, hire a coach, get some training, up level your skill set, learn something that can make you money right away. Instead of learning something that's going to make you money 10 years from now. All right. And yes, that's true. Everybody and their mama got a master's degree. It does not make you special anymore. It doesn't. A couple years ago, you had something to brag about if you had a master's. These days, everybody's getting their master like online. You can get your master's online right now. So everybody has it. Doesn't make you special. And it's not necessarily going to make you more money. So that's number one. Number two, the second mindset shift that I had to make was believing that I was saving time by doing it all myself. Now, if you have been like a faithful follower of my brand for years, then you know back in 2014 is when I taught my very first webinar. It was a four-part webinar series. And the title of this webinar was The DIY Entrepreneur. I kid you not. I literally was teaching people how to do it themselves, how to do everything themselves in their brand so that they didn't have to hire anybody. Now, at the time, it seemed like a really good idea. However, four years later, now that we're in 2018, right, I've learned from my mistakes. That's what it's all about. It's all about evolving, learning from your mistakes, and then teaching somebody your lessons learned. April says she's dealing with that right now. Okay, April, so you can learn from my mistakes. 
Trying to DIY everything is not going to save you time. It's not going to save you money. It's literally going to cost you more time. Now, yes, it may cost you more money, but you spending money on those small tasks will free up your time for the big tasks. As the brains behind the brand, as the CEO of your company, there are certain jobs, certain tasks that only you can do. You're the visionary. You're the idea person. You're the creator. So if you need to be creating, you don't have time to answer every email. You may not have time to create all of your graphics. You may not have time to build your own website. Now, yes, if you have a certain skill set, you know, then absolutely go for it. But if you are struggling to teach yourself a new skill so that you can save money by not hiring somebody, it's just a waste of time. Take it from me. Because those little basic graphics that you're going to teach yourself how to make in Photoshop, the time that you're spending, you can literally pay somebody else to do it. Or you can use Canva if you want to DIY some of your graphics. Canva is a lifesaver, but Canva is not the end-all be-all. Like, some things you're still going to need to hire a professional for. Now, I know that y'all like to ball on a budget. I'm not saying that you got to break the bank. Okay, I'm not saying that you have to break the bank in order to build a successful business. But what I am saying is that you are getting in your own way. You're standing in your own way. You are slowing yourself down if you are trying to do everything yourself. So instead of being a DIY entrepreneur, now I've shifted. I've shifted from DIY to delegate. When you learn how to delegate, first of all, you're showing that, that you can put your pride aside. You are showing that you trust somebody. For me, it was, it was a trust thing. Like I know for sure, 100%, my problem was not that I couldn't afford to pay somebody. My problem was that I, I couldn't put my pride aside long enough to trust somebody to do things for me. Because I thought, can't nobody do it how I do it. Ain't nobody going to get it done the way I can get it done. And that was wasting a lot of time. And the beautiful thing is, when you let other people do the things that they love to do, it's going to turn out a million times better than when you are just half-assing it. Because you don't really know what you're doing. Or you don't really have time to do this. You're just trying to finish it. You want to be cheap. You want to do it yourself. When you let somebody who is a genius blogger blog for you, they're going to do a much better job than you trying to just hurry up and get something up just so you can say you, you, pub you published something today. I promise you. When I started, and I've, and I've had a team. I've been blessed to have a team for the last five years. But it's, it's literally been very recently that I've put my pride aside and handed over like real responsibility. But I have been so pleasantly surprised. Like, I was so scared that nobody could do what I do, the way I do it, that it was holding me back, right? These people are literally amazing. They are geniuses. They are so talented in, in their, you know, in their own areas. And when you let people do what they are really gifted and blessed to do, you're going to be blessed, okay? So the first mindset shift that, you, that I had to make in order to make more money, number one, I really believe that the only way to make more money was by getting more degrees. Not true. The second mindset shift that I had to make in order to make more money is that I had to do it all myself. DIYing it is not the way to go. Delegating is the way to go. Real bosses delegate. All right? Number three, the third mindset shift that I had to make, and this one was a hard one, I really truly believe that because I was already making coins, I didn't need a coach. Because I was already making coins, I didn't need a coach. And let me tell you where this mindset came from, all right? It probably has something to do with pride, again, right? Because you think you can do it all yourself. You don't need no help. Can't nobody tell you what you should be doing. I was saying all that stuff, right? But the real root issue that I had with coaches is that I hired a coach back in 2013, and it was a total and complete waste of money. Like, this lady wasted so much of my money teaching me this basic bullshit that I already knew. And I was really just turned off. And so ever since then, I really believed that I didn't need a coach. I really believed that I was doing good all by myself. I really believed that, you know, I had it all together. Can't nobody tell me nothing. 
But very recently, I've actually hired a coach. And when I tell you, it has been one of the best decisions I could have made in my business. Like, I have a whole new business model. I have real amazing clients, like clients that I actually want to work with. I actually was turned off from coaching. I quit coaching a couple years ago because I was working with people who didn't want to do any work. And so this time around, now that I've hired a coach, right, I'm more intentional about who I want to work with. And I'm re I've really been attracting the type of clients that I want to work with. The people who actually want to do the work. The people who actually want to invest in themselves. The people who don't just want to have these great ideas, but want to turn those great ideas into income. And so one mindset shift that I had to make in order to make more money is believing that I could do it all myself, right? You cannot believe that you can do it all yourself. You can't. Your coach is going to help hold you accountable. Your coach can see things that you can't see, right? From the outside looking in, it's much easier to see what you need to do. It's much easier for me to help my clients figure out where they're missing out on money in their business. They come to me feeling frustrated, feeling discouraged, feeling like, okay, I'm making a little bit of money, but I'm not making consistent money. And it's much easier for me on the outside looking in to break apart their business model to really tell them where they're missing out on money, how they can further monetize their business, right? So it's so important that you understand that you don't have to know everything. You don't have to do it all. You don't have to be so full of pride that you can't get help. And it's okay if you've been sitting on good ideas. We all got good ideas that we've been sitting on, all right? If you are feeling stuck and you don't know how to take this idea to income, you don't really know how to execute your ideas, even though you have, um, even though you have some great ideas, you don't really know how to execute. Guess what? That's what the Get Money Gang is all about. That's what I created this program for, so that I can literally help you monetize, help you turn your ideas into income, help you stop sitting on those million dollar ideas. All of us are doing it or have done it. And so I really truly believe in that whole each one teach one thing. I really truly believe that as we learn, as we grow, as we become better, we have to turn around and teach the next person. We have to turn around and share our lessons learned. And hopefully today, these three mindset shifts that I had to make are going to help you make more money as well. Because I promise you, if your mindset stays the same, your money is going to stay the same as well. All right. Now, tomorrow I'm going to be back right here at 12 noon, talking about how to monetize. Today was all about mindset. Tomorrow is all about monetization. If you don't want to wait till tomorrow for some more of this goodness, click the link in the Get Money Gang bio or in my bio at Coriel so you can sign up for a one-on-one -on -one session so we can figure out how you can turn your idea into income. All of this info is in the link um, in my bio. I'll be back live tomorrow. And I'm going to make sure that I save time to take um, questions tomorrow. So if you have any questions, bring them back right here tomorrow. If you missed any part of this live broadcast, then definitely go back and hit the replay. I love you. Peace.